bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. Is there anyone wishing to address the council in regards to this matter? Seeing none, what is the council's pleasure? Motion to approve the resolution. Second. Is there discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. This is the time and place for a public hearing as advertised on the matter of Resolution 15-326, approving the plans, specifications, form of contract, and cost estimate for the Gifford Road Storm Outfall Project FY16. Is proof of publication on file? It is on file. Have any written protests been received? Been received. Is there anyone here tonight who wishes to speak to the council in regards to this matter? Seeing none, what's the council's pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. Is there discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. This is time and place for a public hearing is advertised on the matter of resolution 15327, authorizing disposal of city property, legally described as the north half of lot five, Tibbet and Herald subdivision. It is proof of publication on file? It is on file. Have any written protests been received? Been received. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council in regards to this matter? Seeing none, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. This time and place for a public hearing in regards to Ordinance 6253 amending the zoning map is adopted by reference in Section 15.02.070 by rezoning lots 378 through 382 in the south half of the vacated alley abutting Belmont Addition from R1 single family residential district to C2 commercial district as defined in Chapter 15.15. Is proof of publication on file? It is on file. Have any written protests been received? None received. Is there anyone here tonight wishing to address the council in regards to this matter? Seeing none, is there a motion? Motion to concur with the community development recommendation. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. This is time and place, uh, and for those at home, oftentimes they say they can't hear the vote, and so that vote was four to one. Uh, council person White voted against it. Um, this is time and place for a public hearing is advertised on the matter of ordinances amending chapters 13 and 15 of the 2000, <coughs> excuse me, 2010 Council Bluffs Municipal Code referencing electrical fence regulations and security permit fees. E1, Ordinance 6254, amending the Chapter 15.03 definitions by adding Section 15.03.271A, fence, comma, electrical security fence. E2, Ordinance 6255, amending Chapter 15.24, Supplemental Use and Site Development Regulations by amending Section 15.24.040, Fence Regulations, to include and address fence electrically charged security. And finally, E3, Ordinance 6256, which amends Chapter 13.16, Electrical Code, by creating a new section, 13.16.0, 485 entitled Fence Electrically Charged Security is proof of publication on file. It is on file. Have any written protests been received? Been received. Is there anyone wishing to address the council in regards to this matter? And I think we can we do it all in one motion, Dick? Is there a motion from the council? Motion to approve Ordinance uh, 6254, 6255, and Ordinance 6256. Second. Is there discussion? 
Though I still have some concerns about the, the wisdom of, of opening the store. Uh, on the other hand, there have been quite a few uh, reasonable uh, restrictions and other requirements put in place on this. So I believe it to be a, a reasonable compromise and we'll support it. Do we need to do anything about the other parameters that uh, were presented this afternoon from Don Gross regarding oh. the fence? Regarding industrial? Yeah. We don't need to deal with that here, right? This is just commercial? Yeah, this was just for the C2. Okay. So, though we could amend it and then and go to a 4 3. Hearing. Wait, we could, that, that would be agreeable. Friendly amendment to that effect? Uh, yeah, I'll still move that amendment. Can, can somebody verbalize what we're doing? Would we'll be including industrial, is that the intent? We're a adding, uh, yeah. Industrial. Uh, 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 yeah, I want an I-2. So it would apply not just to C-2, but to I-1 and I-2 as well, these requirements. Is Correct. that fair? Yeah. The second concur with that? Any discussion on the amendment? Yeah, I'm, I wanted a little more information before we included industrial because I worry um, and in some of the industrial zones, it wouldn't, some of the things that we've put in place for the C2 may not be appropriate in an industrial zoning. Um, generally, they've already been allowed and we haven't had any problems in those zones that I'm aware of or have been made aware of. So I'm a, a little concerned about extending something Normally, the zoning's a little stronger and a little stricter in a commercial zoning than in an industrial zoning. So without having an opportunity to hear from uh, those that are in industrial zones as to whether this would adversely impact them, I, I don't know that I would be in favor of doing that tonight. If we do edit now, I, I do believe, and Dick, correct me if I'm wrong, if, if we then remove it, it wouldn't necessitate a beyond a fourth reading because it'd be less restricted? We're, we're currently in our second consideration at this point, so we'd be moving it on to the third consideration tonight as amended. I would recommend with this kind of a change that we go ahead and have a fourth consideration. Yeah. Fourth ready. Well, yeah. yeah, we talked third, about that this afternoon. Third, third consideration to elect to take the industrial element out. Uh, require it, yeah. Yeah. Well, you could yeah. just go ahead and set up the, you'd be going back to the, what was originally proposed, uh, you could go ahead and pass it at the third consideration. Okay, okay thank you. All right. That would be helpful. And I think in regards then to that amendment, we do have someone from the public who'd like to comment. Can you give your name and address for the record, please? Yes, I'm Michael Pate. I'm with the Electric Guard Dog, and I live in Columbia, South Carolina. It's a little warmer there today. <laughs> uh, regarding industrial zones, uh, we've read through this thing uh, ad nauseum and gone with the city staff on it and really gone through it fairly thoroughly. I don't think there's any restriction in the industrial zone that would uh, inadvertently harm anyone in the industrial zones. I mean, basically what you're looking at is a safety concern on the way that these particular uh, devices are installed. So you're going to have the same rules that apply to an industrial zone, a commercial zone, in, being at C1, 2, 3, 4, wherever it is. As an example, we just got a... Um, we just got an amendment passed through the California State Legislature that applied to all non-residential zones, and it was verbatim for every zone. So we're looking at an international standard that applies to all zones other than residential, and everyone in those particular zones has to apply that standard to the installation of these devices. Yes, ma'am. My concern would be that there's uh, certain parts of that ordinance that would prohibit the use within 300 feet of residential. And because of the way Council Bluffs has developed over the years, we have industrial uses quite close, actually, to residential. Um, <coughs> say ConAgra, you know, you've got right across the street, you've got residential. Right now, if I understand this, they would be able to put your fencing in under the ordinance without a problem. But if we change it to include industrial, then they would be prohibited from installing this. It was my understanding, Councillor White, that electric security fences were prohibited in all zones. But Don told us today that they were already legal. Well, in but one of the criteria is within, is it 200 feet of a... 300, of a res, 300 feet of a residential area. Okay, so... so as, as Council Member White says, um, Griffin Pipe is surrounded by residential uses. Um, 
ConAgra right across the street has residential uses, and so they would be prohibited from having a fence. And so she wonders and, if it's too restrictive. And, I guess. And, and with that restriction, my answer to you would be yes. Um, you know, there already are safeguards within the within the amendment that pro, that prohibit anyone from accidentally touching the fence. Number one is there's a there's a perimeter fence already up. So you have to have a minimum of a six foot tall perimeter fence constructed that constructed of some material that adheres to the existing codes that exist in Council Bluffs. So there's a separation between the perimeter fence and the electric fence. In the international standard, it's 100 to 200 millimeters. Well, no one in America uses that standard, okay? So we all go and we revert to the old English standard and we go to a foot. Uh, you really don't want it any farther away than that because you're trying not to create what's called a zone of entrapment. Now, some folks out there, you know, who actually have these fences, they like the zone of entrapment because they want to find the guy there the next morning. But as a matter of safety, you really don't want to do that. So you want to have it fairly tight up to that perimeter fence. So um, with that being said, it's, it's, it's not a lethal device. It's tested by a nationally recognized testing laboratory to the international standard and labeled as such so that it's not going to cause anybody harm. That's not to say you're not going to feel it when you touch it, because if you touch one, you will know you have touched it, and you will not do it again. Believe me, I've done it. I don't like it, and your body doesn't like it. But um, the 300 feet, eh, that's a little iffy. I mean, I, I work on this all the time across the country. For some reason, people want to throw that that uh, that 300 foot radius out there, and that's that's kind of archaic because it usually comes from um, you know like some adult entertainment to a school. That's where that usually comes from. You know, you don't want adult entertainment within 300 feet of a school and you put them at least that far away or in other districts. And that's kind of where that 300 feet comes from. There's really no logical scientific reason to do it. I mean, what's the difference between 299 feet and 301? Nothing. Right. I just don't want to make it too restrictive. I just don't and want to rule out industrial in, uh, in, in that respect, it would be. In, in, in that respect, it would make it more difficult. And I, I would think in industrial areas, you might want to throw the 300 feet out, but you know, it's up to you guys. So um, we could throw it on, and, and it's, uh, Nate says if we decide to pull it back, it's mm -hmm. less restrictive, and, and we could continue on our route. And that will give our staff time to respond. So. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, well, that makes and if sense. it goes to a fourth reading, then there's even more time for industry such as ConAgra to, to respond. Yeah, it would be nice to know what they think. Mm -hmm. Does Definitely. extending it by two weeks change your, um, because this would make it go to another reading. Is that going to yeah. make any difference for you guys? No, well, I might be on vacation there, but that's about <laughs> it. All righty then. <laughs> it's just usually a lot warmer here in January than it is. Oh, right thank now. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on back then. Okay. <laughs> Still shivering when I hit the ground this morning. I don't know if you'll find that as funny Oh, this as is we a warm do. day. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> All right, we have a. A motion and an amendment on the floor. So we're uh, any more discussion on the amendment? No, I'll just uh, for tonight. I'll go ahead and vote in favor of the amendment um, until we can get more information. Because I don't know, it's a bad idea. I just worry about over restrictions. Yeah. So, well, since we'll have an opportunity to yeah. talk with ConAgra next next week, I uh, yeah. Yeah. visit that with them directly. Perfect. All right, we're voting on the amendment. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And now the um, ordinance as amended. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Um, Madam Clerk. Ordinance on first consideration, replaying ordinances which approved and or amended a tax increment financing district. Ordinance 6257 to repeal ordinance numbers 5662, 5858, and 5924, which approved and amended the tax increment financing district for the Manawa Business Park Urban Renewal Area and Ordinance 6258 to repeal Ordinance Number 6134, which approved the tax increment financing district for the Nebraska Avenue Urban Renewal Area. Motion to move the ordinance to second reading. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Ordinances on second cons ordinance on second consideration. Ordinance 6252, adopting the 2015 Municipal Code of Council Bluffs, Iowa. Motion to approve. Second. Is there discussion? 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion Pose. to waive third. Oops, same Sorry. sign. <laughs> <laughs> Jump the gun. Motion There's to waive third. There's a motion to waive third. Is second. there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolutions. Resolution 15-328, approving the Waterworks Board of Trustees 2016 calendar year budget. Motion to approve. Second. Is there discussion? Uh, we did uh, have some detailed uh, explanation uh, of this uh, at the study session. And uh, the point was again made that we have a resolution that says that we're approving the, the Waterworks Board of Trustees budget, when in reality that's not exactly what's taking place. It's more the fact that, uh, that a formal uh, notice has been provided to the council and uh, Councilwoman uh, <coughs> Head and I discussed this uh, between meetings and thought that uh, not only did that point need to be emphasized this evening but perhaps uh, in future years we could either add that as a matter on the consent agenda or merely add it to the uh, to the study session since it's informative and, and mm -hmm. formal action is not actually required. The uh Waterworks, for those that don't know, is a utility authority. Um, they, well, I don't know if that's a correct statement. Is authority the right? They don't do mm -hmm. agency. And the reason I wanted to clarify that, an authority would have the authority to raise property taxes. They don't have that. They have the uh, uh, ability to charge a fee. And so uh, this council appoints members to the board. The board um, approves the budget based on the recommendations of the president of the waterworks and then they um, submit that budget to the city to file but the city does not approve the budget it's approved by the waterworks board of directors which um, is the clarification that they wanted made for the record so um, would it be appropriate to reword the motion and say that we're receiving and filing it rather than approving it? Yeah. Have it be a consent agenda item? That's what, that's what we're saying next time we should do that. Yeah, because there, some sense. They really yeah, aren't I mean, yeah. we have no say yeah. over the increase. Right. And there's well, and it's, and it's confusing, especially I brought up earlier last year, it was front page headline that the city council raised mm -hmm. the water uh, fees, which was not true. And it just confuses people. So I think this would help. So if we could get, yeah. A friendly amendment to that motion to receive and file. Receive and file rather than approve. Yeah. Motion. Motion. All right. Okay. So uh, we have uh, an amendment to receive and file. A second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, and then the resolution as amended. On, on the, on the uh, for what it's worth, worth on the substance of it, I, I think the Waterworks has been really prudent. I, I know raising rates for a, a, a service uh, that everybody needs water is, it can be difficult on folks, but at the same time, I think they're being very, very wise and avoiding being penny wise and pound foolish by using the money necessary to keep up the, the replacement of water mains, some of which we have, I think this afternoon was referenced to some of them that go back to 1881. As you might <coughs> imagine, um, those, uh, many of those need replacement by 2015 uh, or past that date. And I think they're really prudent to, to plan ahead rather than do a, an increase all at once in the future. I think they're being far more prudent and conservative in, in the way they're budgeting, despite the fact that it, it is going up, as is the cost of everything else. Any further discussion on the amended resolution? <coughs> Just one more comment for those people who like to delve into the super exciting details about budgeting. Um, Marcy, is this this is also something that's included in the upload of the packet, the water, or is that separate? How is that handled in case people want to go and look at it? It's not uploaded in the packet. So, okay. It's always given oh, it's to council under it, it separate. It would be it's probably on their website, public yeah. information. Well, it's probably on the, on the Waterworks, waterworks website. Be available website. at the Waterworks. Okay. All right. Very good. So those who want to read the budget should go to the Council Bluffs Waterworks website. 
Any further discussion on the resolution as amended? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolutions repealing urban renewal plans and areas. Resolution 15-329 repealing the Manawa <coughs> Business Park Urban Renewal Plan and Area and Resolution 15-330 repealing the Nebraska Avenue Urban Renewal Plan and Area. Motion to approve Second. B1 and 2. Second. Any discussion? You know, for those at home that often don't t understand TIF, um, TIF is an economic development tool that the city uses to help incent development. Um, it is the ability to take the incremental increase in property taxable value and return that to the developer to help them with the cost associated with improving an area. And once that, that obligation um, is fulfilled, then taxes, the full increased valuation goes back on the regular tax roll and gets distributed out to the county, to the school district, and to the city. And so what this Resolution 7B does is take two TIF areas that have performed as agreed and puts them back on the tax roll because the obligation is no longer there for the city. And so the TIF process has come full circle. Um, any other discussion on the resolution? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-331, authorizing the mayor to execute a memorandum of understanding to enter into a development agreement by and between the City of Council Bluffs and Broadmoor Development Company. Motion to approve. Second. Is there discussion? I, uh, I plan on supporting this aspect of, uh, of the development project because I, I think it uh, has a sound uh, business plan to it. Uh, understand that uh, so far the, the financing aspects for this uh, phase of the project uh, appear to work out and there's a, there's a need for this type of, uh, of housing in, uh, in that portion of the city so I intend to support. I, I support it uh, too and I support it because it uh, it, as uh, Councilmember Ringenberg says, it does have a, a, a good financial plan in place. I also support it because it's a diverse mix of housing, uh, including row housing, a lot of, a lot of housing that uh, millennials as well as retiring baby boomers, uh, there's quite a demand for people moving back to the, to the center of a city instead of living far out from it. And I, I think it's a fantastic idea right on our riverfront. It's, it'll be a great thing for the future of our city. Well, we've mentioned here several times before, it's, it's really a great opportunity that will reshape the, the west entrance of, of Council Bluffs, um, along with attracting more residents, more businesses to our community. So I think overall it's, it's a fantastic project and will be an asset to Council Bluffs. Any further discussion? You know, can I amend my motion in that I wanted the MOU to reflect that the 12 months in 4.1 was based um, from the date of certificate of occupancy being mm -hmm. issued. I'll second that. Right. That'd be okay. Yeah. yeah. Any discussion on that amendment? That had to deal with the retail space, that if it didn't lease within 12 months, I just want to make clarify sure that, that that's after they get the CO and not from the time of construction. That's the point right. of order. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. That makes, that's prudent to clarify that. Says seven C. Thank, yeah, thanks for refreshing that. <laughs> the, uh, any further discussion on the amendment? Um, any, the, all right. Uh, and we have a first and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And the resolution as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-332, authorizing the mayor to execute a memorandum of understanding to enter into agreements by and between the City of Council Plus, Noddle Development Company, and the Iowa West Foundation. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Close same sign. Nay.
Resolution 15-333, authorizing a joint application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority by the City of Council Bluffs and Blue Horseshoe LLC for a workforce housing tax incentive program <coughs> benefits. Motion to approve. Second. Se is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign. Resolution 15-334, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with HGM Associates Incorporated for engineering services in connection with the West Broadway reconstruction phase one project. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? The reconstruction of West Broadway for the first time since I believe 1949-50 uh, is moving ahead. Uh, I know a lot of people think it's, it's a dream, but it's becoming reality. And my, uh, my compliments to uh, Public Works for giving this the, uh, the priority attention that it, uh, that it deserves. This is obviously a big project, and they're moving with, uh, with all diligent haste to make sure that this, uh, this moves out as quickly as possible. One of the things I raised during the study session, and I, I hope we see uh, as we progress along, is the, the corridor plan that was uh, approved uh, not too long ago offered different options on uh, on what uh, what the reconstructed West Broadway uh, would would look like and how it would best serve businesses and uh, and travelers on on that uh, on that thoroughfare and uh, and as we move through this process of uh, of design and engineering and planning I, I look forward to being able to compare uh, the pros and cons of those various options so that, uh, that so that the public gets to analyze those and review them as well as uh, as well as we do and that we make the best possible uh, decision well on this issue you know the thing with West Broadway <coughs> is is that getting this rebuilt is what's going to help us redevelop the West End uh, it's real hard to attract developers and businesses to want to locate on West Broadway when the road is in such poor condition with no storm sewer, big hump in the middle of the road, um, the mud splashes on the side of the buildings every winter. So these are the things that are gonna really assist us in getting that redevelopment of the West Broadway corridor complete. So I'm really excited that we're moving forward. And in, uh, in kind of uh, correlation to what council member Ringenberg said, uh, to be sympathetic to the businesses that are located on West Broadway, we can, in theory, knock this out in a couple summers, but uh, this is phase one of what's estimated to be five phases over five <coughs> years. Um, we are staging that so that businesses um, that are located on West Broadway are as minimally affected as possible. And so uh, it will take about five years, and, and I think the transformation will be dramatic when it's done. So. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-335, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Valley Corporation for the levy certification project, project structural MR2 project, FY 15-06B. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Oh, I forgot to say this afternoon, um, the lowest bid came in 15% under the engineer's estimate. So that's always good to see that. Yeah, we hope that continues in a long and arduous process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not holding my breath. But <laughs> any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-336, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Olson Associates Incorporated for engineering services in connection with the Harmony Street Rehab Project. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. <That's> okay. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-337, authorizing the city clerk to certify the weed assessments to the Pottawatomie County Treasurer. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Um, the only discussion is uh, the total assessments 
are $12,525. Um, the city will not be able to collect uh, $1,457 on those properties that have new owners. So uh, taxpayers lost out on those costs. And, and so that the people at home know why that is, is that the, the county treasurer, which these are um, assessed as liens on people's properties, um, only accepts these liens certain times of the year. And so if, if a sales transaction <laughs> takes place before that um, assessment is on there, uh, the city ultimately loses out. So it isn't anything the city did, it's, right. it's how the liens are assessed. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-338, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a back to the river agreement which provides funding for the phase two of River's Edge Park project. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? I just want to thank uh, Bank to, back to the Bank to the river? Back to the river um, for their financial support of this project. $100,000 is, is a lot of money, so it's much appreciated. And it involves a group that uh, works on both sides of the river for the metro area, so it's a fantastic uh, example of, of all of us working together for mm -hmm. mutual benefit. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign. Resolution 15-339, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a community partner playground agri agreement with Kaboom for a Kimball Park project. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? I think this is a great project. Um, it kind of seems like a little mini dream playground where a bunch of community volunteers come together. They build it in one day. Um, the write-up said that it'll take about 125 volunteers to, I see there's Boy Scouts in the audience, mark your calendars. Um, but seriously, the, the, uh, the folks that live in the North Broadway area are, are typically very involved in the community. So I have no doubt that uh, 125 people and more will come forward to help build this playground for the kids to enjoy for years to come. I'd like to single out for praise the North Broadway Neighborhood Association, uh, which is much of that area, certainly north of Kimball Park for all the work that they do, particularly involved in this project, working to help make our city and their neighborhood an even better place to be. That, that, that area had lost, had lost uh, playground because of the gun school mm. closure, so this is uh, kind of a nice way to uh, make up for that, plus uh, it kind of uh, identifies and targets the really small children, which is kind of refreshing. Sometimes they get left out in the equation. So. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign. Applications for permits and cancellations, 8A, B, B inclusive. Motion to approve 8A and B inclusive. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Any citizens requesting to be heard? None received. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council? Seeing none under other business, um, and this is a little bittersweet for me. I had the opportunity to serve with Lynn Brannigan for 12 years. She is a committed community volunteer, not only on the city council, but in a variety of, of ways in the community. Um, as she contributed and continues to contribute, and, and I don't believe we've probably seen the last of her, but um, she is gonna take some time off to work on her business and, and uh, get it successful, and, and so we'll give her a couple years to do that, and I think we'll probably see her back uh, uh, making uh, a run again for the council, she's assured me, so. Um, this is a certificate of appreciation. Oh, appreciation. I'm going to start all over again. This is a certificate of appreciation in recognition of the years of service and devotion to the city of Council Bluffs, Iowa. This certificate is hereby presented to Lynn Brannigan in honor of her leadership and achievements during the years of 2004 through 2015, 
when she served as a city council member of the city of Council Bluffs, Iowa, is presented to her on this 14th day of December 2015. Um, please join me in thanking Lynn for 12 years of service to the city. Thank you, Lynn. You're certainly welcome to say something if you want to. You bet. I hate getting emotional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate it, I really hate it. I just wanna thank everyone for giving me the opportunity <clears throat> to serve for 12 years. It went by really, really fast. Um, Matt, you, you did the spoiler alert that I was gonna run again, <laughs> um, if the Sorry. voters will have me. Um, I hope to remain involved in uh, city matters and any other community boards that will invite me. Uh, not everybody, please because I do need to concentrate on my business, but it's not my nature to not be involved. I don't really remember a time not being involved. So I would imagine as long as I'm able, I'm gonna do something so that my husband won't have to look at me every night. <laughs> I don't think Gardner has a problem with that. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> during the study session this afternoon, uh, our parks department did a presentation on the Emerald Ash Bore um, in the next few days, give it a, a couple days to be downloaded to the website. If you have an ash tree uh, in your yard that belongs to you, and the reason I say it that way, if the ash tree is on the parking that belongs to the city, if it's in your um, outside of the sidewalk, or from the sidewalk to the street is the city's, from the sidewalk to your house or backyard is yours, if you have an ash tree and are concerned about the emerald ash borer, which is on its way um, and will, uh, untreated, will kill your ash tree and you'll have to remove it, there is some information that will be on the city's website that will help you uh, make strategic decisions of what you do with your ash tree. So uh, go to the, the City of Council Bless's website and look into the emerald ash borer. Um, and I had one other thing I was going to say, but I won't remember it till the ride home. So, Christmas. How about wishing everyone oh. a Merry Christmas? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, uh, Happy Holidays, Mer Merry Christmas. What troop uh, do we have here tonight? That's what I want to do. Troop five. And uh, tonight in the audience, we have Boy Scout Troop 5. So uh, thank you for joining us. And, and They're all still awake. <laughs> 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 all right. Anything from the council? Oh, I just wanted an opportunity to publicly thank Lynn for her service. I've been serving with Lynn on multiple boards and uh, committees since 1992, I believe. Um, Lynn is one of the most committed people to Council Bluff she'll ever meet. She, um, she's always been involved. I'm sure she always will be involved. Um, and I just appreciate everything she's done and everything she will continue to do for Council Bluffs. I, I met Lynn when working with a lot of uh, neighborhood work, uh, including my, my own neighborhood, and she, she never missed an opportunity, and, and I'm sure will never miss an opportunity to help every group bettering our community, and it, it has been an honor and a pleasure to serve with you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all very much, and we are adjourned. The Mid-America Center is the Heartland's premier entertainment and convention center. December 17th through the 19th, local teams go head-to-head -head on the hardwood at the Max Shootout. Then see America's favorite traveling train show at the Train Expo January 2nd and 3rd. And the action doesn't get any bigger than Monster Jam January 9th and 10th. Over at the Convention Center January 10th, there's endless inspiration at the Wedding Essentials Bridal University. Remember, the MAC offers free parking for all events. Tickets, information, and more at midamericacenter.com.